Owner of a Lonely Heart was released in the latter part of 1983 and became Yes's greatest hit single, reaching number one. A prog band going to number one is sort of a rarity, but this was more of a pop prog rock song. Incredibly catchy. Trevor Rabin had brought the song into the reunited Yes, or a band that ended up being a reunited Yes. But there were many detours on the way to creating that number one song. Ahmet Erdogan, who was the head of Atlantic Records, said, there's no way this song is not going to be a hit. We'll make sure it's a hit. So he really believed in it. Trevor Rabin brought that song to the band. He tells the story on how it became, well, owner of a lonely heart on Rock History Music. You've invented something, and I know you've been told this, but man to man, I'll tell you, you invented something there that in a thousand years will still be played. And that one part, the beginning part, you know, that's the thing, right? You never know. I know you did it in the toilet. You told me that we've got the clips. Yes. But yes. the fact that you invented this thing, and you've done a lot more, obviously, because, you know, the audio part that we did before, I've got all your soundtrack albums coming out in the back so people know what you've done, because credit where credit is due. But Oh, wow. Way to go. Did you feel uh, pressure uh, replacing a uh, lot in... I mean, I understand the story and how it all happened with Yes, but the Steve Howe thing, that, how was that for yeah. you? Well, it really wasn't anything, because um, Yes had broken up um, I think a year or so before, and Chris and mm-hmm. Ellen were doing stuff together. I was, I had signed a development deal to Geffen Records, and uh, uh, that's when I moved to America from England. And uh, I spent six months writing basically what became 90125, and uh, then Geffen dropped me. So I started sending cassettes of big, of uh, what was 90125 out to record companies and I Ron Fair was the first guy he was the great A and R guy at RCA and went on to actually funnily enough run Geffen Records. But uh, he wanted to sign me and he phoned me and said, Oliver Lonely Hearts a smash and I went, Oh, it is? <laughs> Thanks. Okay. And uh, and then Phil Carson from Atlantic phoned me and said, do you, do you want to get together with Chris and Allen? And um, I flew out to London and met with Chris and Allen. We had a jam, and it felt great, and one thing led to the next, and Tony Kay got involved, and for nine months, we rehearsed under the name Cinema, and it was going to be a four-piece band. We basically finished the album, and uh, then John heard some stuff, Chris had played him some stuff, and uh, we invited him in to sing on a couple of things, and he did, and uh, it became, well, this sounds exactly natural, and... Uh, you know, that's why there's still quite a lot of lead vocals of mine on that album, because John had all, uh, we, we all thought, but John particularly thought, that sounds great, I don't want to change that. And, um, but it, only then did it go on to be called Yes, so there was never really any consideration of it. In fact, the name Cinema went, because a lawyer sent a letter saying, there's another band called uh, Cinema, and uh, we own the name, so... There was, you know, we could see there was this inevitability of people asking for money to be able to use the name. So we just scrapped the name. Atlantic were happy to call it yes, and that was it. Owner of a Lonely Heart riff, it's interesting that you were, you talk about the opening where you had that in your holster, more or less, and it was and you had said that you weren't sure if it was good because it was simple or was it just good, right? There was just something about that. You know, it's funny because, uh, believe it or not, I wrote it. I was on, on the toilet where the acoustics were really good. I had an acoustic <laughs> guitar, and I played the riff, and I thought, wow, this is something really great, or it's nothing. And then the next day I played it again, and I thought, no, there's, there's something cool about it. And then I think it was the third day, I, I, I mean, it's a long time ago, but I think the third day uh, on a subsequent visit, um, I played the riff and wrote the chorus, um, and which stuck from day one to the end. Um, so, you know, it turned out to be the right riff, thankfully. Trevor Rabin's brand new album is called Rio. Uh, he hasn't released a vocal album in a gazillion years, but he put a lot of work into this, a lot of great guitars. First, we talked to Trevor on the phone, and then, well, the promotions company said, let's give him another interview. They liked our work, so we got a chance to talk to Trevor on video. And that was just sensational. But he's really proud of this, and he 
really should be because there's not a bad track on it, first of all. He gets a little political sometimes, talking about the state of the world. But I highly recommend Rio. Again, links in the description if you want to pick it up. Make sure you comment on our videos. We read all the comments. Share our videos on social media. Subscribe to our channel and like our videos as well. Remember, you can make a donation to our channel. At the very top of the description, there's a PayPal link where you can make a donation. Or join our Patreon where you get early access to all our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky Stream Music. Take good care of yourself.